The human eye is a sophisticated sensory organ. In simple terms, the eye picks up light information and transmits it to the brain. But there are so many structures and signaling systems involved to make this happen. The cornea is the clear, slightly raised part of the eye that allows light to pass through to the pupil, which is just an opening in the circular iris. The iris can adjust to allow more or less light through the eye. Then the light is focused and projected on the retina as it passes through the lens. The retina contains all the photoreceptors of the eye. On the surface of the retina is a small region called the fovea, where vision is sharpest and most of the cones are concentrated. All the neurons of the retina lead to the optic nerve, but the bundle of nerves makes it so that no rods and cones are present there. This small region creates a blind spot in our vision. Outside of the retina is the choroid, which is a highly pigmented layer with lots of blood vessels. Outside of the choroid is the sclera, a white protective layer that connects with the cornea. Inside the eyeball behind the lens is a clear jelly-like substance called the vitreous humor. In front of the lens is the aqueous humor, which has a watery texture. And in front of the eye are the protective eyelid and conjunctiva, which is a mucous membrane that lines the eyelid. Let's look deep at the retina to see how the photoreceptors work to process light. The retina is a light-sensitive layer of tissue in the eye, which contains the two types of photoreceptors, rods and cones. Rods have a flat end and are very sensitive to a fairly wide range of light. They work very well in dim light, and they're found all over the retina, except for in and around the fovea. Rods do not perceive color, so these give us black and white vision. Cones have a tapered cone-like end and perceive color in bright light. There are three types of cone. Red cones absorb red light very well, green cones absorb green light, and blue cones absorb blue light. They're found only in and around the fovea. Not all animals have the same distribution of rods and cones as humans. For example, nocturnal animals will have mostly or all rods to help them see in the dim light of the night. Light enters the retina in such a way that it must pass through some translucent neurons on its way to the rods and cones. The ganglion cells are neurons that have long axons that lead to the optic nerve and create a blind spot at the optic nerve where there are no rods or cones. Bipolar cells are neurons that connect ganglion cells to the rods and cones. And the rods and cones are the photoreceptors located just in front of a darkly pigmented layer of cells. When rods and cones are not stimulated by light, they release an inhibitory neurotransmitter to the bipolar cell, which prevents it from sending a message to the ganglion. If there is light stimulus, the rods and cones stop sending the inhibitory neurotransmitter, which then allows the bipolar cells to depolarize and signal the ganglion cells. Then the ganglion cells can carry the impulse to the brain through the optic nerve. You may notice that one bipolar cell will synapse with multiple rods, but each cone has its own bipolar cell. This difference allows color vision to be very sharp images, but rods alone will produce a lower resolution image. This is the view from the bottom of the brain. The right field of view is highlighted in yellow and the left field of view is highlighted in blue. Once the signal from the eye enters the optic nerve, the signal will travel all the way to the back of the brain to be processed in the visual cortex of the occipital lobes. Interestingly, the right visual field of both eyes is processed in the left visual cortex, and the left visual field of both eyes is processed in the right visual cortex. The reason is because axons from the left and right eyes cross over at the optic chiasm. This carries data from the right field of view only to the left side of the brain and vice versa. A common genetic condition in vision is red-green color blindness. It's a misconception to think that people see only black and white with color blindness, for that is rarely the case. In red-green color blindness, there's a fault with either the red or green cones. Both variations of those genes are located on the X chromosome, making this a sex-linked trait, which is therefore more common in males than females. People with red-green color blindness can see blue very distinctly, 
but reds and greens look very similar, more like shades of brown. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.